Shalom. First and foremost, giving all honor, praises, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rakah HaKadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who were well. And peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the Lord's elect. All right, this is Brother Yeshaya, part of Minna Valley, South Carolina. Now, this uh, is going to be a quick lesson, a quick testimony on um, how uh, hyperinflation, or, uh, I mean, inflation, namely hyperinflation, is here. Okay? Um, as you see on the screen, I have the uh, definition of hyperinflation um, pulled up. I'm going to read a little bit of this article, and I got some several pre's to go into. But basically, uh, the testimony part of this is that uh, I sent my uh, my Eve to the store earlier all right, to get some ground beef. Now, namely, the ground beef that, uh, that I eat. Uh, is grass fed and is very lean. So, um, I asked her. I asked her specifically. I said, uh, you know, she she uh, makes sure that she gets me grass fed um, ground beef. But I asked her just through the uh, just through the spirit. I said uh, ninety and ten. So that's uh, ninety percent lean and ten percent fat. And then she said, okay. Now when she got back, she told me that the price of a pound of ground beef was $18, $18, okay, now, um, you know, I, I brought up the fact that I told her that I wanted the 90-10 uh, ratio of beef, um, you know, and that again is 90% lean, 10% fat, you know, which is uh, pretty, uh, uh, very, uh, very lean uh, ground beef, um, she actually said that she said she had to dig around, but she found one, uh, one pack and it was grass fed, organic, 90%, 90-10 ratio ground beef for a regular price. It was close to $10, but you know, that's better than $18. And that's what the price of beef is, uh, right now. It actually went up. It used to be five, $6. Um, now it's, uh, 18, but um, before it went to eighteen, it was a, uh, it, it was a uh, ten, it was a uh, basically nine dollars, and that's what she got it for. So, um, you know, that was through the spirit uh, that I told her to get that specific beef, that ninety ten, which is a, 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 a um, good quality of beef, and she did, dug around and found it, and everything else was basically not the organic kind, uh, just the regular eighty twenty. 70 30 and that shit was and that was still 18 dollars man so the lord ended up looking out by um giving um having that one pack of that 90 10 ratio of ground beef available for you know um for, for me i mean for us you know of our household but you know that might be a small thing to some but that's that that speaks volumes to to me about you know these upcoming families and how you how about you know Shai's gonna um have his take care of his men man because what's the odds of me telling her ninety ten organic grass fed ground beef and um only thing that she could find you know, she went to the first store and there wasn't any ground beef so she went to the second store and all she saw was the the regular beef the eighty twenty you know the real fatty beef not grass fed which was eighteen dollars but then she said she found one pack. That was ninety ten. That still was uh, that I specifically asked for. That was better than all of the other meat, um, at a fairly low price. At a well, not even fairly at a, um, you know, at at the regular price, which is um, basically half of what they were asking for. Okay, now that ties me into this um, article, man. All right, because that's hyperinflation and it's here. Uh, this is hyperinflation. What is hyperinflation? Hyperinflation is the term to describe rapid, excessive, and out-of-control general price increases in an economy. While inflation is a measure of the pace of rising goods for goods and services, hyperinflation is rapidly rising inflation, typically measuring more than 50% per month. So it went from uh, uh, $10, $9 to $18, man. So, you know. Although hyperinflation is a rare event for uh, developed economies, it has occurred many times throughout history in countries such as Germany, I mean China, Germany, Russia, Hungary, and Argentina. Hyperinflation refers to rapid and unrestrained price increases in an economy, typically typically at rates exceeding 50% each month over time. Okay, so we're experiencing that right now. 
Hyperinflation can occur in times of war and economic turmoil in the underlying production economy in con conjunction with a central bank printing an excessive amount of money. And that's what's happening with us, with the, uh, with the U.S., man. Uh, the, the U.S. is printing off uh, the most money that it ever printed off, okay? And that causes inflation pumping more money into the economy when the prices of the, uh, and that which is in, in return devaluing the items that you're using the currency to, to purchase, man. All right? So they're, they're basically, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're somewhat um, engineering hyperinflation, man, just like they're going to, uh, which is going to be a part of the famine. Okay, hyperinflation can cause a surge in prices for basic goods such as food and fuel as they become scarce. And, you know, um, that's happening um, and it has happened in the um, past and it's going to happen again, man, because, in uh, I think I heard in um, certain parts of California, gas is eight dollars a gallon now, man. All right. While hyperinflations are typically rare, once they begin, they can spiral out of control. And that's definitely what's going to happen because this hyperinflation is going to end up sparking a famine. You know, so let's just get into it because uh, this is going to be this famine that's coming, you know, is going to be engineered by the Lord. Amos 8 and 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. OK, now, as we know, that's the most important famine. That's why it's mentioned right here. But. There's also going to be a famine of uh, bread. Okay, let's get that right now. Okay. Second Ezra uh, 15. Uh, there it is. Uh, Second Ezra 15, 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. And let's talk about the physical bread right there. Okay. So there's going to be a, a, a great famine that's to come, man. You know, but, you know, uh, the, the scriptures warns us of these things. And it also tells us that the Lord is going to actually uh, um, have the elect covered, man. This is that, that quick little testimony that I had. Luke 21 and 11, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall be from heaven. So there you go, another uh, example of famine, okay? And uh, like I said, these scriptures, the scriptures are littered with, um, with uh, you know, prophecy. <laughs> and uh, one of the prophecies to come uh, in the next, you know, in the uh, up and coming months, man, from what it looks like right now, because it's here right now, it's gonna be you know the fall of this economy, just as the um, the the article said, hyperinflation usually uh, dictates. Uh, yeah, Second Edge six and twenty two, and suddenly shall the song places appear unsung, the full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. There you go. So those full grocery stores, those full uh, supplies of food. You know, that is so abundant right now, or it used to be so abundant where you can go and just fill up two or three eight, uh, baskets of um, uh, shopping carts full of food. Um, and, you know, there was enough to go around for everyone, man. That's that's coming to an end, man. Okay? That's coming to an end. Now, uh, and, and, and um, you know, a uh, it's not far-fetched that a famine... Um, it's coming because the Lord has engineered uh, plenty of famines in the past. And there's going to be a, uh, this is going to be the famine and all famines. But um, this is going to be, this is a, a example right here of one of those famines that the Lord had uh, Salakia set up in the past. Second Ezra 6, I mean Salakia, Second Kings 6 and 25. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it, all right, until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. There you go. So, um, a bird shit, okay, was sold for, for pieces of silver, and that's how bad it got, and that's, 
it's gonna get uh worse in the upcoming uh you know in the times to come but let's go to uh that word besiege in the blue letter man all right uh where was our second kings six and twenty five okay it's in 24 as well, but let's see. Tripping. Let's see if this was better. All right. Uh, and that word right here is sore. It's a heart. Strong's H, 6696. Sewer. Sewer. Sewer, uh, to bind, besiege, confine, cramp, to confine, secure, to shut in, besiege, to shut up, and close, to show and still the two being an adversary tree that's full to form, fashion, delineate. Okay, and that's what's gonna happen when uh, everything shuts down, man. Hey, the the the, the governments, the, the the government, you know, is gonna um. There you go. It's the same word right there, and the government is gonna uh, take hold. Of Babylon the Great, aka of America, shut this place down, and with that is going to come uh, martial law, okay, and the implementation of that thing, that MOTB man, which you know, if you don't take that, then it's going to be um, draconian measures that's going to uh, be taking place, man, okay. But man, the Lord said that um, he will actually uh, uh, take care of his elect, man. So you know. Um, and we're in this thing, and um, we we see this stuff going on, but we're not we're not fretting, man. We're not um, getting scared because as long as we do, we gotta do, man. How about Shemiah Shah is gonna protect his elect? Lord willing, we be, I'll be part of the elect, you know. Uh, and, and 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 you know the yeah. <laughs> Second Chronicles twenty and nine. If if when evil cometh upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine. We stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then with hear, then thou wilt hear and help. There you go. So, man, you got to know the names of your house by shop to be able to call upon help, man, for, um, to be able to call upon him for help. Okay, that's a that's a bad scripture, man. Second Chronicles twenty and nine. If when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in thy in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then will uh, thou will hear and help. So the names are very important, man. Okay, you gotta know the names of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha. Job five and uh twenty two. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. Okay, so there you go. Hey, uh, at destruction and famine, uh, the Lord's uh, men are going to laugh, you know. Because, hey, uh, we knew this was coming. And we're going to be, uh, Lord will not be a part of that number. Um, going to be overjoyed because Yahweh Bashem uh came through on this promise, man. And ultimately, uh, we know that we are part of that number. Psalms 37 and 19, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. So there you go. In the days of famine, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Lord's elect is going to be satisfied, man. All right? And uh, one of my favorite ones, we're going to go uh, we're gonna end it with this one. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 65. All right? Verse 13, therefore thus saith the Lord Yahweh, behold, my servant shall eat, but ye, sh uh, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry out for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. So, hey, uh, the service represents, hey, the Lord's elect. And the Lord willing, I'll be a part of that number. And, uh, hey, uh, the sincere brothers and, uh, you know, sisters that uh, make up the elect. Or the sincere brothers and uh, sisters that make up the uh, hopeful elect, you know, uh, you know, may may the Lord be with us, man. So, uh, if it be His will, of course. So that's it, man. I'm gonna give our honor, praises, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakhak Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the elect.